This is the Paragon 28 Gorilla MTP plating system. What you see here is what shows up to every single case, okay? So I just wanted to start with that because some surgeons have asked uh, in certain cases, you know, if they're only using, say, the, the small primary plates up top, do I always get the revision plates? And every, the answer is yes. Every single time you do a case, this is the caddy that shows up. We offer a ton of options, not just in our MTP system, but in every other plating system that we have. We go above and beyond with plating options. But for now, let's focus on what we have here in this caddy. So this top region here, these are our primary MTP plates. So we have a small, medium, and large length offering in our primary plates. They are offered in zero, five, and 10 degrees of dorsiflexion. If I remove this caddy, you'll see down below, I have longer plates down here. These are revision plates. These are graft spanning plates. But up here, what we did is we listened to the field, what surgeons were seeing, issues they were running into with traditional MTP plates, and this might be hard to see, but this plate in my right hand has three holes on the distal cluster. The plate in my left hand has two holes. So what we did is we just simply clipped off that distal hole for patients that have smaller anatomy where maybe you run out of real estate for that distal screw. Those are offered in zero, five, and 10 degrees as well. These primary plates, so the plates that you see here and here, these are 1.3 millimeters thick, so a very low profile plate. When you put the screws in these plates, they do not get thicker. That's very important for me to share because I've worked with companies in the past where um, they're marketed as being low profile plates, but the second you put a non-locking screw in the plate, all of a sudden it goes from being 1.3 millimeters thick to 1.8 millimeters thick because of head prominence. All of our screws sit inside the plate, zero uh, head prominence. Now, if we go down below, these are our revisional plates. So we have a small, medium, and large options, right and left, five degrees of dorsiflexion built in. Down below, we have our graft spanning plates. In a different video, I will show um, our options as far as the trials, and even a demonstration, um, plastic imitation, graft of our MTP disc so you can get an idea of why we created the graft spanning plates. These are designed to span the graft uh, for a complex primary or um, a situation where you need to add length uh, for the procedure. Now, over here we have our instrumentation. You're probably familiar with cup and cone reamers. Um, not every company offers these in their sets, which is surprising to me, but we do. So we have our K-wires that work with our cone reamers and our cup reamers. We have matching sizes for our cup and cone reamers. One cool feature that is not necessary but just simply available is we have these reamer guards that connect to the reamers, okay? So you can protect the surrounding tissue, surrounding bone um, while you're spinning the reamers at a high speed. And those are offered for both the cone reamers, these work with the cone reamers, these work with the cup reamers. Down below we have the precision guide, which I will share more information about in the next video. Okay, so this is going to be an overview of the precision guide that comes inside of the MTP uh, plate system. So this is the targeting guide itself. And how this works is this th small thumb screw is going to assemble to the plate itself. I'm going to do this on camera so you can see how simple this is. And I like to work with the text before the case to have them load this up on maybe an opposite side plate of what we're working on just so they can get a feel of how this works. And I think this is really important to see um, outside of a brochure in, a, in kind of a three-dimensional type setting so you can see exactly uh, how this precision guide works. Now, it is not necessary to use this with our system. It's simply provided um, as an option. So by all means, if you would like to throw your crossing screw freehand, we fully support that. The added value that I've seen of this precision guide is that it takes a, what's somewhat of a reproducible procedure and makes it that much more uh, reproducible. It also ensures that 
the K wire, which I'll show in a different video, um, and the screw is going to miss every single one of these plate holes. So what I have seen uh, with certain physicians is, let's say they usually go with a 3.0 cannulated crossing screw and two seven screws in their plate. Um, some of these physicians are actually upsizing to a 3.5 to get a little bit better bite, or maybe even a 4.0 because they know that every single time they throw this wire, and if they like that wire on x-ray before they buy it, um, no matter if you're using a 3.0, 3.5, or 4.0 cannulated screw, it's going to miss all of these holes. So there's some value there. Uh, the other reason that I like it is some surgeons have actually sized up their uh, plate screws maybe from a 2.7 to a 3.5 or a 4.2, and all of our plates accept all three of those screws. And you can mix and match if you so choose. Um, you could go all 2.7, all 3.5, or a mixture of 2.7, distal, 3.5, proximal. It's totally up to you. Now, this precision guide has five different targeting uh, zones or hole options. They all work, okay? I always recommend starting with the middle hole, just as a starter. Um, but you can go more plantar, you can go more dorsal, you can go a little bit more distal, or a little bit more proximal. They all work, they will all miss all of the screws in the plate. So what I've seen is <clears throat> those physicians who really like to throw crossing screws freehand, again, by all means, you can still do that. If you do want to play around with this in a case and take it for a test run, it's always going to be there for you. So this is our precision guide technology that you'll see with the MTP plates, NC fusion plates, and also the Lapidus system. Okay, so following up on that precision guide technology, I'm going to reassemble the targeting guide. So you can see I've got screws in this plate now. These blue screws are 3.5, these green screws are 4.2s. This pink screw is 2.7, so I just wanted to show how versatile these plates are as far as screw options, okay? But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to load up this precision guide, just like that, okay? Um, so in a real case, you would not have your screws in right now. Um, we, we would probably have olive wires pinning proximal and distal, but just for sake of proving the concept and how the precision guide works, so you can see, as I'm holding this, I'll try to give you good angles, that targeter is going to miss every single one of those screws. Okay? And so I've actually got a K-wire here to further prove the value of the targeting guide. Okay? So what you see here, as I mentioned in the other video with this precision targeter, this works the exact same way on the MTP plate as it does on the Lapidus plate, the NC fusion plate, the Silverback um, uh, ankle fusion plating system. Um, so this precision guide technology is something that's really cool and exclusive to Paragon 28. And again, you don't have to use it. It's just an option, just an added value. Um, we, we like to accommodate a lot of different techniques, and, and if you have a technique that you prefer, we respect that. But this is always going to be in the set. Cool little option from Paragon 28. The last part of the Gorilla MTP uh, overview that I want to share with you is something that I just, I've had such a great experience with uh, since coming to this company, and that is the preserved bone wedges. This is a just a demonstration model of what the bone wedge looks like. So you can see, I mean, this is a little jagged, it's just plastic, but you can see the convex, concave shape of it. Um, procedure specific graft, just like a lot of our preserved bone wedges are. It's an incredible line. Um, so in this caddy, which this caddy would come with your implants, but if you knew you were gonna need an MTP disc uh, to restore length, we would order this in. Your length options, as far as the graft goes, um, you, you have a five, an eight, 10, 
15 and 20 in a 19 diameter. So the 19 diameter here, that's what I normally see used, just has a great fit for a lot of patients, but we do also offer a larger diameter, uh, a 21 in a five, an eight, and a 10 length option. We have reamers that come in the set. These are exactly the same as the reamers that you get here. The cool part about um, how we design this system is our graft is designed to work with our hardware. We designed it as a system. So every thought that we put into this, we put into this so that they work extremely well together in surgery. So our reamers will ream and prepare the bone for this to fit perfectly. And, and quite honestly, it sounds a little cliche, but they fit like a glove. They look amazing on x-ray. Um, some other notable points to this preserve line, and it's not just this disc, but all of the other preserved wedges that we have. We harvest these, we density match these, depending on where we're putting the graft. So this particular graft that you see right here was harvested from the distal femur. We do not bleach, we do not use hydrogen peroxide, and we do not gamma radiate. So we preserve the strength, okay? So you can drill and put screws through this all day long. I would encourage you to do so. Okay, these are strong grafts. Um, they're gonna have uh, uh, a faster incorporation um, based on how they're processed. Um, and there's no cortical rim. And, and we've seen that they have a better union rate. And we have a lot of this data to back up and share with you in our phenomenal technical monograph, which I can certainly share with you. Um, but these grafts are fantastic. They work extremely well with these plates. And um, any one of these revision plates, actually any one of these plates that will span the graph will work. I most commonly see the revision plates used the most. And then occasionally, if we go with a graph that's long enough, or too long I should say, we can use this graph spanning plate to really make sure that we have enough length. And you, this is a pretty good view right here where you can see that your distal holes are missing the graph, your proximal holes are missing the graph. And uh, depending on whether or not you throw a crossing screw, it's 50-50 in my experience, whether a crossing screw are used, is used or not. But you can see how this uh, works together. So all in all, this is, I shouldn't play favorites, but this is one of my favorite lines that we have. Our MTP plating system is amazing. Um, and I, I have not had a bad experience with a physician since I've used it, um, knock on wood and anyone that uses it really sees the value. You know, lastly, I have over here our instrumentation, which comes in all of our Gorilla sets. We offer a um, fenestration drill bit. So this is a 2.0 drill bit that has a 10 millimeter stop. So as it relates to the graft, you can uh, fenestrate this graft inside and outside. We can use V92, our cellular graft, um, to smear on uh, both sides to add a little bit of help for that incorporation. <clears throat> um, we also offer, let's see if I can get it out of here, this fenestration chisel, which you can use uh, to create channels between all your fenestration holes. Um, so our joint prep instrumentation is just as complete as our instrumentation and our implants, and all in all, it's just a phenomenal set and uh, please let me know if you'd like to take a closer look. I'd be happy to drop off a set and you could take a look on a, an acrylic model, look at the actual set itself, um, or we could have a discussion about uh, how this could serve to help your practice. Take care.